Okay, so doing something slightly different for this video here. It's not exactly vloggish, because I'm going to be trying to put some video editing pictures on the top to illustrate my points, but I'm also going somewhat off the cuff. And I'm going to try to avoid rambling for this particular review, because this is, this is a semi-review of Count Brass by Michael Moorcock, or the, the Count Brass collection. Specifically, I'm referring to the collection that was put out by White Wolf Books back in the 90s, when they were putting out a series of collections of various Michael Moorcock books. Um, this is not how I read the Hawkmoon novels. Um, those I actually had the individual novels for those. Um, but it is how I read the Elric and Melnumity series. And I'm actually going to do, planning to do a more in-depth scripted video related to that. In terms of recommended editions for how you should, uh, how you should read the Elric novels. Because things have gotten slightly weird when it comes to reading, reading order for Elric books. So with that in mind... Count Brass. So my original intent had been, this was actually quite some time ago, to review, after I'd gotten through the Hawkmoon series, review the Count Brass novels. Basically because the Count Brass series had been, was a direct successor to the Hawkmoon series. I'd read Hawkmoon, my favorite might as well review the sequel. Seemed logical enough, seemed rational enough, seemed like it would fit perfectly with the whole concept. Then I read them. Then I read the, I believe it was like three uh, Count Brass novels. And I went, hmm, I don't know about this. It doesn't quite work. And it took me a while to figure out why. Guys, yeah, this has been nagging at me for actually a year or two now since I first read it. And the reason for it, for pushing off, is this. The Count Brass novels do not work if your only exposure to the Eternal Champion mythos is the Hawkmoon series. And coming in... My like the Hawkmoon series is my is the the first of the Eternal Champion mythos that I have reviewed on this channel. And well, the problem is like it's not my first exposure to the Eternal Champion mythos. Eternal Champion mythos. I started with the Elric of Melnibony series, which admittedly is probably where a lot of other people have started as well. They picked up the. White Wolf collections of the Elric novels, or they got the original Ace paperbacks at a used bookstore somewhere, or they've gotten the more recent Delray collections, and they got those, and that worked just fine for them. If that's what you got, more power to you. But, with, but, there's, there's no tap dancing around this. The Count Brass novels, basically by the midpoint of book two, operate from the perspective that you know that there are multiple incarnations of the Eternal Champion and you've met them before. You're familiar with the multiverse. You're familiar with at least one other incarnation of the Eternal Champion, most likely Elric. And to Moorcock's credit, he he knows which of his uh, Eternal Champions books have sold better. And you are also familiar with Tanlorn, based the city of the balance, for lack of a better term. You know what Tanlorn is. And in short, the next three books are basically bring Hawkmoon straight, like, right at the deep end of the Eternal Champion mythos of all the stuff of different incarnations of the Champion Eternal, 
uh, the champion of the eternal consort, all this, that, and the other thing, universe hopping, what the rules are for who can travel between universes and how and why, all this sorts of stuff. And that's where things get, where it comes tricky for me to review this and make a recommendation because Hawkmoon works as a good jumping on point for the Eternal Champion mythos because you don't need to know anything else. You don't need to know who Elric is. Like you don't need to know who any other incarnation of the Eternal Champion is. You don't need to know what the concept of the Eternal Champion is. Things are introduced to Hawkmoon as they are introduced to the reader. And it works really well for that. With Elric and a few other things, there gets into a little bit of wonkiness related to the publication order of the books. The fact that, like, the Elric novels are published out, like, were not published in chronological order for the characters, and I'm going to get into this when I do a, a more deep dive on my recommendations for the best way to read, read Elric. And that sort of thing. So the main Hawkmoon series is all pretty much well, pretty well self-contained. You like, all you need to know is in the books, which is the right way to do it. Yep. And you, if you pick up odd bits in the background there, that's because we have a suet feeder and the chipmunks are trying to get into it and they've been trying to get into it for quite some time and with varying degrees of success. And we're trying to stop that from happening. But I digress. So, Akman and Count Brass. So when I picked up the Count Brass collection, actually the thought I had in mind wasn't, oh, this is a sequel. It's, oh, this is a prequel. Because when we are reintroduced to the character of, to the character of Count Brass at the beginning of the Hawkmoon series, what we are told, and what we learn up front from Dorian Hawkmoon Van Kuhn, is that, oh, he knows who Hawkmoon, like, Hawkmoon knows who Count Brass is. Count Brass has developed a reputation and a track record as a hero and whose exploits have been for quite some time. And I thought that's what they were going to do, that, oh, we're doing them. Hawkmoon stories first and do a flashback like a, a bunch of books later like oh I want to re revisit this setting I'm going to do this with Count Brass that's where, that's where we're going uh, when I first picked this up and it's not that instead like time travel gets involved earlier chronological incarnations of characters come up um, parallel universe incarnations of characters come up all this, that, and the other thing before we finally get into a bunch of dimensional hopping at the end. Um, involving in current, like, time travel with the with people from the Emperor of Grand, Empire of Grand Britain and dimension hopping from various forces of um, allied with chaos. And it ultimately again wraps up with Hawkmoon having to jump universes to a different universe, pose as their eternal champion to complete that champion's quest for doing one more jump to go off with Elric to do a third Elric and a bunch of other eternal champions, including Garakuze and that sort of thing, to do a third quest before finally ending in Tanlorn. And the best comparison I can make to it is this, for why this doesn't quite work. Let's compare this to Crisis on Infinite Earths. Crisis on Infinite Earths Earth, as a story is one you can generally hop into as even as a, actually I'd even say even as a casual comics fan, like the original like comic storyline. Because as an audience, even casual readers know Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman is. We have a general concept of who the Flash is, that is thing that he goes up ludicrously fast. Probably even more so now that the Flash is a major television series. Or um So we have that information there that we can work off of. We know who these other characters are. 
So and then the story does a pretty decent job early on of introducing, oh, there's a multiverse and it is being wiped out universe by universe. And like a lot of the other characters, like the monitor and that sort of thing are introduced within the story themselves, at least in most of the uh, trade paperback collections you'll get. So the jumping on point is pretty straightforward. You're, any characters who you need to know are people who you have a casual familiarity with because they are so permeated popular culture. Now, imagine reading Crisis on Infinite Earths, where the only character in the book you know anything about is Wonder Woman. You don't know who Elric is, or Elric say Superman is. You don't know who the Flash is or Batman, but you do know who Wonder Woman is. So you go, okay, hey, Wonder Woman's in the storyline. I want to read this book. And then, oh, oh my. Like, she's in there. She plays a role. But it up to a certain point, she's not the lead, really. And it like it's a big epic storyline. It's engrossing. But there's a lot of who is this guy? I mean, he's important. I'm kind of interested in this person, in this Flash guy. But I feel like this this sequence would have more emotional resonance to me if I knew more going in about who the Flash was. That sort of thing. And that's where it becomes tricky for me to recommend, or even talk, like, talk heavily beyond what I'm talking about now, this series, about the Count Brass series. I enjoyed reading it. I thought it was a good, in, it was a reasonable, I would say, I don't want to quite say good, but like it's it's an all right inclusion in the Eternal Champion mythos. Is it something I would unquestionably recommend? No. And certainly, it's not where you should go next after reading Hawkmoon. Like, it's a good place to go once you've read Elric, or once you've read Ericuse, or another of the Eternal Champion mythos character. Another incarnation of the Champion Eternal. But that's it. Like, that's that's kind of where we're at with this. So, like, if you've, so I should say is, if you read Hawkmoon, if you've read Elric, or one of the incarnations, and you liked it, go ahead and pick up Cap the Cap Brass collection. If not, hold off. Read some of their stuff first. Next month, I'm going to do a video, like a more kind of structured video, getting into the publication history of the Elric novels with the specific intent of going, okay, where should I actually start with Elric? What is the best way to go through this character's story and to move on from there? But that'll be start of next month. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.